Hey everyone, it's May. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some Song of Horror, so let's go ahead and jump in and play this prelude. A Friday like any other. Well, that's not great. Why is my apartment so claustrophobic? Home sweet home. Oh, yeah. Why not? Drain stink. Maybe we should wash them. Put some Drano down there. I'm looking for coming home after a long day of work. Should we water this plant? Eat some pizza. Not the greatest pizza, but it'll do. Watch some TV. Uh, can't wait to watch X Files. Nice. Babes. What else we got going on in here, Daniel? Oh, crikey. Seriously? Nah, man. I just got home. I'm not ready to talk. Sophie, it's taking me years to put photos up then. Did... Is she gone? Hello. Daniel, it's me again. Hey, we've got a bit of a major emergency going on here. Oh, you're joking. Friday evening, and there's an emergency? This when is isn't there an emergency? Sebastian Husher is nowhere to be found, and his manuscript should have been at the office by Tuesday. He won't answer his calls, and he hasn't shown up at his office at the university. He's vanished into thin air. Oh, don't screw with me, Etienne. Call him on Monday, or send a courier for him. I, I just got in the door less than five minutes ago. I go myself. But I've got to attend Albert's performance in half an hour. Plus, Husher's house is closer to your place than it is to mine. Come on, man. The sooner you go, the sooner you'll get back home. You're going to owe me a big fat favor. Whatever you want. Write this down. 4 Abbott Thomas Road. In the old housing developments along Highway EB-15. EB-15? Good God, that's out in the sticks! I plan to take a few days off after this. Well, we'll talk about that once you find him. Oh, and if he gives you the manuscript, don't show it to anyone. And don't go selling it off to the highest bidder. I'll see what I can do. We'll ring you up when I get back. Thanks, Dan. You're saving my skin. Again. Another Friday evening and I'm working as an errand boy. I suppose they're too important over at Wake Publishers to come looking for jolly old Husher themselves. Shit. Even I should be too important for that. I mustn't overstretch my complaints. Rising from my lot as a drunkard and financial ruin to that of an errand boy is actually quite an improvement. If only things had gone a bit better for the company, or I'd got on the wagon a bit sooner. Sophie did the right thing when she divorced me. I would have divorced myself in her place. Daniel Neuer, the bloody alcoholic. 
chin up, you. That is Daniel Neuer, the bloody ex-alcoholic, after all. Wake publishes employee by day, Wake publishes screwed up a lackey by evening. Even Friday evenings. But if I could find Husha, I have a feeling my status at the company would rise quite a bit. After all, he is the publishing firm's biggest star. Let's cross our fingers and hope he's home. Nah, he's probably out buying groceries. Oh, this place needs a little TLC. Oh, they have the hose out. Someone was washing it. They have the right idea. Alright. Bicycle. I didn't know how she had kids. Of course. This is way too big of a house for just one man. Or two, because I'm assuming he has a wife. Why don't we just call the wife? Has she not seen him either? Newspaper. That murder they arrested a week ago. Oh. I mean... I want to say Hello? something about the creepy music box, but if there's a murder on the loose... Is that music? It could be either. Or I they could be connected. Uh, each character has their own light source. Turn it on and off. The flashlight button. F, yes. Illuminate thing. Brown. All right. Is that someone playing a music box? Only your imagination. Travel guides. Oh, see, maybe they're just on vacation. Like I want to be. Hmm. Hmm. Alarm is disabled. Much better. Yes. Depression painting. You don't want depressing paintings hanging up. Why not? Oh yeah, see? Travel brochure, suitcases. Clearly they were going on vacation. With so many people in the house, it's no wonder. Oh, it's a wonder no one knows. True. I mean, not really. It's not really a wonder since no one's home, it seems. Those bottles, and to think they almost ruined my life. Ooh, so we have a little bit of a problem, do we, Daniel? That's not that plain. What about you, Mr. Dear? Are you playing the music? I don't. Eh, I guess it is about as big as you are. First edition of his own books. Classy. Can I go through the story? Just kidding. If, uh, if I ever get anything published, I'd definitely keep a copy. Books and plates in the same cabinet. That's how you know he's a writer. Dirty mirror. The portrait. See, even the mirror's dirty. I just need a little bit of love. This place will be great. If you're okay, Daniel, we'll look at it. I just wanted to look at the rest of his house because I'm a creepy stalker guy. I uh, found some. Let's read it. Dear Sebastian, how are you? To be completely honest, I must admit that we are all impatiently awaiting your latest work. My dear friend, I must ask a favor of you. Enclosed with this letter, you will find one of the latest items we have purchased at the store, an ornate music box with fascinating engravings. The craftsmanship is astonishing, but something else has caught my eye. Or perhaps I should say ear. The melody, Sebastian. It's peculiar. You have to listen for yourself. I have never heard the song before, and my attempts at finding the score, or the name of the composer, have failed. 
I cannot for the life of me get the melody out of my head. I can assure you that by the end of this, neither will we. What the? How can there be a door there? Why does it look like something straight out of Silent Hill? Classical music. Okay, so maybe. Stuff lying all over the place reminds me of my college dorm. Nice. Radio is older than me. I mean, I guess we can go. Hang on. Wow, this looks like the haunt. Sophie would have a fit. Uh, all right. There's a creepy Silent Hill door. It is then. That leads to Outlast too. Crosses everywhere. Hardly taken a step forward when I heard the door close behind me. When I turned around, the door wasn't there anymore. And all that was left of it was a strange shadow on the wall. I searched. I despaired. And I screamed until my throat began to burn. The candles started to run out, as did the batteries in my torch. From within the most suffocating darkness, the hours went by until turning into days, and I began to fall in and out of a restless sleep. I would hear voices, sometimes right next to me, other times a few yards away. It seemed like they were coming from the other side of the wall. Desperate cries, howling in horror, and sometimes, the worst of all, a vast, oppressive silence would fall, seeming to emanate from everywhere and nowhere all at once. There was nobody there, just hallucinations. Nightmares, black nothingness, and the song from that music box. Trapped in this impossible place, I wondered if I was going to die there. Etienne? Do you have any news on Daniel yet? Oh, Sophie. No. We've been calling him at home all day, but there's no response. Do you know if he's got a mobile phone? No, I don't think so. And if he does, he doesn't tend to keep it on him. Oh, man. I think I should pass by the Husher place when I leave, just to see if they know anything. Husher the writer? Your client? Yeah. I sent Daniel over there on Friday, and I haven't heard from him since. What's the address? I'm going to stop by Daniel's place, and if I don't find him, I can go around and ask about him. The house in the outskirts of town, on Highway EB-15. Number four, Abbott Thomas Road. It's a big house. Okay. I'm headed over. Call me if you find him. Uh, of course. Same to you. All right, guys. Well, it seems like we started this episode with one missing guy, and now we have two missing guys. And it also seems like that's the beginning of the prelude. So I know this was a short one, but hopefully you're as excited by that little bit that as I am and play through it very soon. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.